So let's talk about the strobe heads first. I use Alien Bees. These are pretty much the cheapest and most reliable strobe lights that you can get on the market. Um, I use them all the time. I've taken them to Mexico and Costa Rica. They're light, they're functional, and for my purposes, they work great. You don't need a $100,000 pro photo lighting kit in order to take great images. Now this right here is a bell. We put the bell on the strobe in order to control the light. If I was to take this off, we would call that an open head. So now you can see it doesn't have the protection from the side anymore to prevent the light from just spilling out everywhere. We're gonna have our model a little bit in front of these lights and we don't want this light to spill all over her and give her weird shadows and light spilling onto her face. We wanna really control the light that we have on the model. So these bells are gonna help us do that. So you wanna think of light kind of like a cone, right? So it starts from a source like this one and then it spreads as it gets further out. It also is the most powerful at its source and the further the light gets away, from its source, obviously the less powerful it is. So the one thing that you need in order to make your strobes actually work is what's called a pocket wizard. Now this is going to trigger your camera to the strobe so that when you fire the shots on your camera, this is gonna go off at the same time. So you're gonna have one plugged into your light, which we like to attach to our stand like so, so it doesn't dangle all over the place. And the other one is gonna go on the hot shoe of your camera so that when I fire this shot, this will go off at the same time. I'm testing it right now by pressing the test button on the side, but if I was to turn this on and actually take a picture, it would fire. One mistake that I see a lot of photographers do is that they light for the subject and then they consider the background. I actually go the opposite way. I light for the background first, and then I light for the subject. Now, we are in a white cove today, which is a very easy lighting setup, so I don't have to think too hard about how I'm gonna light the background, but I'm still going to light the background before I light the model. I wanna make sure I have an even spread of these lights, and I don't have any hot spots. Now generally, I like to have the background when we're talking about just making it a nice bright white, about two thirds of a stop brighter than the model. So I need to make sure that I'm happy with my meter readings in the background before I start playing around with the light in front. This is a meter. Now I know a lot of people don't use meters these days. I was taught in the days of film, so before digital came around, you actually needed to know exactly what your readings were. If a light meter is not something that you wanna use, you can always go by eye, but for me, this is the best way and the most efficient way to get the exact readings that I need. So because I wanna light my front at about a five seven, I want my background to be about a little bit brighter than an F8. I'm getting eight and a half here, getting about an eight and a half here, and getting about an eight and a half there. Now these meter readings vary a little bit, and I'm not gonna be too exact on these, but they're gonna give me a good base so that when I actually look at my shot in the camera, I'm gonna see that it's got the nice, white, bright look that I want. All right, let's talk about the front light and let's talk about skin tones. Now, as a general rule, I actually like to overexpose just a little bit on my models, usually about two thirds of a stop. What it does is that it kind of nicely evens out the skin and helps blow out any imperfections and just gives it a real nice pop and contrast that I enjoy. You're gonna to want to alter that overexposure depending on the model's skin tone. Bailey is like a, a nice tan right now, which I know she did for me because she tends to be on the more porcelain skin side, let's say. So usually when I shoot Bailey 
when she's not tan or somebody who's a little bit paler, I'll usually shoot maybe a third over. So if I'm metering, if I'm exposing at my camera for five, six, I want to read Bailey at about a five, six, seven. That's two thirds of a stop overexposed. Now, if you don't use meters, this isn't going to mean anything to you. You're just going to have to use your eye. But like I said, I like to be precise. And so we do meter readings. So I'm going to read the light on Bailey right now and see where we're at. We are at a five, six, eight. That's close enough to a five, six, seven, especially with her skin tone that I'm okay with that. That's about two thirds of a stop overexposed. I'll try again, see if I get a slightly different reading. I'm getting a five, six, seven at about her chest. So a 10th of a stop is something that I can live with. Now, if she had very, very dark skin, like if you're shooting an African American model, you might want to shoot almost at a five, six, nine or something like that. If you're shooting somebody who's incredibly pale, like a really, really pale redhead, you might want to shoot at like a five, six, two. Again, these numbers aren't going to mean anything to you if you're not doing meter readings, which is fine, but I'm just letting you know for those of you who do. One other consideration we want to take. We're shooting in a small-ish white psych studio. Now, when you're shooting, you need to consider that it's not just the background that's affecting your shot. It's definitely the environment in the front of the model to the sides of the model. Think of it, this room, like a box because your light is going to bounce all over the place and depending on the color of the floor and the walls and the ceiling, all of that can make a difference. Now, because we're in a white psych and we've got a lot of white surrounding us and we've got strobes hitting those back walls and Bailey is fairly close to the back wall, we can expect some reflection from the strobes to bounce off of those walls and actually give her a little bit of a rim highlight here, which we may not get in a larger studio. This actually works for us because we don't have room to put back rim lights up, something I will explain in another course. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone by using the light that's reflecting off the background and hitting her to our advantage. Now, if I was shooting on a green screen, this would be a huge problem because what I would be doing is I would be reflecting green onto her. So she would be getting a little bit of a green tint on her, which not only doesn't look good, but for the purposes of a green screen, you're going to start to get bleeding in on the model, which is really bad. So that's just something to consider when you're shooting. Think about your entire environment, the floor, the ceiling, the walls in a 360 degree way.